Sweet home to me. In every song, there is a story. This is a story of a river, its watershed, and its people, and it will tell how thriving farming and fishing communities grew up in the watershed and along the banks of the gentle Wheatley River. It will tell how time and our varied human activities gradually, yet unintentionally, altered the landscape and compromised the water that it supports. But this story will tell a hopeful tale of how people from those communities are recognizing the value of living in a healthy watershed and are looking for alternate and less damaging activities that will, with a continued effort, help restore this tired old river and its watershed to renewed good health. The Wheatley River watershed begins inland amongst the low-lying hills of northern central Queens County. It is a small watershed covering approximately 69 square kilometers along the north shore and drains into the slow-moving waters of the Wheatley River. Mixing with salty tidal waters, the river finally makes its way into Rustico Bay, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, and ultimately the Atlantic Ocean. Our Wheatley River watershed has been the home for diverse plant and animal populations for millennia, and for the past hundreds, if not thousands of years, also supported some human populations. It is close to impossible to imagine, but absolutely probable, that prior to our European ancestors' arrival, our lush watershed fed grazing deer and caribou. The river and the streams teemed with trout and salmon, and the bay filled with cod, mackerel, and all manner of aquatic life, and our warm beaches a respite for colonies of basking sea cow and walrus. The rivers and bays along the island's north shore welcome the nomadic ancestors of the Mi'kmaq, observed fleets of Basque fishing and whaling ships, invited French and English explorers to travel inland, and were eventually claimed by both French and English monarchs. When the first European settlers arrived from Acadia and France in 1719 to make this beautiful piece of the New World their home, they were a small contingent of farmers, fishermen, craftsmen, and 30 soldiers of the Compagnie de Marine for the colony. Michel Hachet-Galland, along with his family, is credited as the island's first year-round European settler. When competition between England and France extended across the Atlantic, and a struggle for ownership of the colonies resulted, Acadians flocked to the island in the 1750s, both before and after the 1755 deportations from the mainland. In 1758, the British, having taken the fortress of Louisbourg for a second and final time, rounded up the French settlers on Ile Saint-Jean and deported them. Finally, this island, in 1763, was ceded by France over to the British, once and for all. A year later, in 1764, the dust of war had settled and the British granted the Acadians permission to return to Ile Saint-Jean, but they were forbidden to return to their homes so had to find new areas to settle. Louis Galland, grandson of Michel Hachet-Galland, 
is thought to have been the first settler in Rustico and therefore in our Wheatley River watershed. Arriving in 1763, he was followed two years later by his brothers and another named Petrie. They and their families established themselves here in Rustico Bay and settled on Riviere à Louis, better known today as Chapel Creek or Winter Creek. Conditions then were harsh, and they overcame terrible hardships, but these tenacious settlers persevered and created the very first community in our watershed. The Acadians survived by fishing, farming, and shipbuilding along the bay and the river. Their community grew but stayed relatively isolated from the English inhabitants until the early 1900s. Their descendants are the ancestors of the families Gallant, Gautier, Leclerc, Blackyer, Camo, Pino, and Doucet that still reside here today. One of the most treasured buildings on Prince Edward Island, the Doucet House, is certainly the oldest building in Rustico, the watershed, and quite possibly in the entire province, has been lovingly restored and is located relatively close to the site of that first settlement. The house, as part of the Farmers Bank Museum, is a national historic site and has been preserved to commemorate the determination and the ingenuity of the Rustico Acadians. In 1763, Samuel Holland arrived with instructions to map and section the recently anglicized St. John's Island into 67 lots. Around the same time, English settlers began to arrive in greater numbers. Samuel Holland named many features in the colony after prominent British figures from the 1760s during the initial land survey, including many island rivers. Local history indicates that the name may have been derived from one Thomas Watley, a British undersecretary and horticulturist. Although no record of Wheatley having visited PEI has been found, he was connected with the colonies. Our river's namesake may have been responsible for drafting the rejected British stamp tax, whose controversy was one spark that helped ignite the fires of the American Revolution. Later, the maps changed the spelling from Watley to Wheatley. In 1772, a wave of Scottish immigrants began to arrive on the North Shore, the largest wave ending in 1803 with a single immigrant group of 800 Highland Scots. By and large, the Scottish settlers found the island well suited to traditional Highland agricultural practices after they cleared away the forests that covered the fertile soil. They cut down trees and planted potatoes among the stumps, tilled small plots with hand implements, and allowed their cattle to graze all over their lands. Their livelihoods were supplemented by timber, which was sold as a cash crop. A British ship, the Rambler, came out from Scotland to Prince Edward Island in 1803, and that same year, a Matheson family settled on the Wheatley River close to Oysterbed Bridge. These groups along the North Shore, Protestant, Scottish, and English predominating, with concentrations of French around Rustico and Roman Catholic Highlanders from Trackety Bay to St. Peter's, gradually brought all the island along the coast under cultivation. <laughs> 